Now let's continue this as we continue to speak on Ethiopia and the kingdom of David and continue to um, verify and prove that the Queen of Sheba was the honorable woman, was the one honorable woman that we can find in Solomon's relationship with women in general from his nearly thousand. She was the thousand and one. If he had a thousand wives, including Pharaoh's daughter, then the Queen of Sheba, she was the one. She was the one who came concerning the truth. You understand? Know the truth concerning the Shem or the name of Yahweh. And here we find she came to prove him with hard questions. And in the bankruptcy chapter, just to review, in the bankruptcy chapter where it talks about and Solomon's heart turned away from Yahweh, it mentions the various strange women that Solomon loved, you understand, and how Solomon went after them and how he built these high places, these clubs. That's what they were, clubs and strip joints. You understand to the the false gods or the goddesses, the divas, because um, where, where was it? Where was it mentioned Ashtoreth, the goddess? She was the diva of the Zidonians, and he did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and he went not fully after Yahweh as did David his father, thus proving the need. You understand, from the Almighty's perspective, to renew that kingdom in Ethiopia, in the highlands of Ethiopia. So, this is just the foundation of the proof that, first of all, the Queen of Sheba, she is not to be, she should not be confused, as many has confused her with um, who is mentioned right here, um, Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter in chapter 3. You understand? The Queen of Sheba in chapter 10 should not be confused with Pharaoh's daughter because, again, Pharaoh's daughter is mentioned connected with these other Beaches. These other Beaches, the women of the Moabites, of the Ammonites, of the Edomites, of the Zidonians and the Hittites, of the nations concerning which Yahweh said to the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you. In other words, you should not have your sons marry their daughters or have their sons marry your daughters, because it says, For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods, after their false gods. And Solomon clave to these in love. Now it's interesting that it mentions it mentions these in chapter eleven after chapter ten and the distinction and difference. So we see the reason why he married Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter was to make political affinity because he was building the tabernacle. He needed men and supplies to do that, right? And they were the master builders, the masters, masons, the Egyptian, the Kamites in that time. But now here, it was the queen of Sheba who came, who had heard. She had Shema. She had Sema. She had Shemad. You know what I'm saying? The fame of Solomon concerning not his wealth, not his money, but concerning the name of Yahweh, concerning the true God. And she came to prove him with hard questions. Now, when we get to this particular book right here, which is the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Menulik, which discusses, this is the Kippur Negas, the work which is like the traditional history of the establishment of the religion of the Hebrews, the true Hebrews in Ethiopia. The establishment of the religions of the Hebrews in Ethiopia. And it's the patent, the patent of sovereignty. You know what a patent is? This is the patent of sovereignty, this Kibra Neges, the book of the glory of kings in translation by um, Wallace Budge, translated from Ethiopic by Sir E.A. Wallace Budge. This is a very, very important document. A very important document because it proves that, this proves that from the Ethiopian record, you understand? This proves from the Ethiopian, let's get this page right here. It proves from the Ethiopian um, record. Uh, where is this right here? Here we go right here. Let's go to this, this right here. Let's see if we can fold this book over here. Okay. Here we have, here we have how Queen Makeda made her son king. How she made her son king. 
We have to understand the role of the divas or the goddesses and the goddess cults in the ancient world and how what Queen Makeda, who is the Queen of Sheba, how what she did is that she flipped the script. She flipped the script. You understand? She flipped the script on the B.C. feminism. The Queen of Sheba flipped the script on B.C. feminism. You understand? Because she sought the truth of God, the true God. And she came to Solomon seeking wisdom, you understand, concerning the name, the Shem, the Shem of Yahweh. Now, here it speaks about, let's see if we can get this. Here it speaks about other matters concerning the oath which was taken. Let's see if we can get this right here. Here it says, um, um, uh, uh, how he himself related to his mother, how they made him king. He's talking about his experience with his father. You understand? His father. You understand? And, and we have to understand these baby mama dramas within the context, within the context of ancient, of ancient uh, history, of our story. You understand? The half of our story, which they, which they have not told us. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, here it is right here. Here it is right here. Now, let's look at this carefully, right? This chapter, chapter 87. Now, we already know in chapter 86 how the queen Makeda, how she made her son king, right? How she made her son king. And then right here, and interestingly enough, if you study Ethiopian history, it will say that after um, the queen uh, Makeda, the queen Sheba, abdicated the throne, because there's a great significance in light of B.C. feminism that there was an oath that was declared that a woman, a female, should not rule, you understand, know upon the throne of, of David in Ethiopia. Now, some would call it sexism, some would call it chauvinism, some would call it feminism, but there's a bigger reality behind it. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, most of us are kind of late in waking up and recognizing it, but it's better to wake up late than not to wake up at all. Now, how the nobles and governors of Ethiopia took the oath, it says, And the queen said to her nobles, quote, Speak ye now and swear ye by the heavenly Zion or Zion that ye will, which is to speak of the Ark of the Covenant, that ye will not make woman queens. You see the significance of that? That ye will not make woman queens. This is where the queen of Sheba, the queen of Sheba flips the script on B.C. black feminism movement, the feminism and the diva movement, the goddess movement, the false gods movement. She said that swear to me now, Swear by, by a heavenly Zion, the heavenly Zion, that ye will not make woman queens or set them upon the throne of the kingdom of Ethiopia. That you will not set them upon the kingdom of the throne of Ethiopia. And that no one except the what? Look at that, the male seed. Now, the big controversy that we're having right now is concerning the crucifixion of the black male. The crucifixion of the black man, the male seed, that black male seed of David, the son of Solomon, the king, shall reign over Ethiopia, and that ye, you all will never make women queens. Never make women queens. Now, there's something very important, and a lot of folks who are uh, 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 ignorant, basically they are ignorant, you know what I'm saying? The sin of the soul is ignorance. They are ignorant. They think, oh, this is sexist. No. Yes, queen, such and such. No, it says you will not make women queens. Why is this so important? You, you, you want to know why this is so important? Let's just show you why this is so important. Let's go here. Let's go here to the bankruptcy chapter. The bankruptcy. This is why it's so important. Solomon's heart turned away from Yahweh. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh or Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonites, and Hittites, right? Concerning of the nations concerning which Yahweh said to the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. 
Solomon clave to these in love. It talks about his 700 wives and princes and 300 concubines. It mentions that his wives did what? That his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was what? When he was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect, was not complete with Yahweh his God, as was the heart of David his father. You understand? Remember, Solomon had a son named, David had a son named Solomon, and Solomon had a son named David, David II, and it is he who renewed the kingdom of David in inner Africa. You understand? In in Africa, in Ethiopia. And this is what we have, the E.A. Wallace Budge translation of our Kibber and the Guest. This is what the story is all about. You understand? But behind that story now of what the Queen of Sheba is saying, when she's saying, swear to me now that you will not make women queens, this is the very reason. Because of that old-time witchcraft, that old-time degeneration of society that occurred in B.C. times. And now we look at the state of black people and the black family and the baby mama dramas and the single mother situation, a deadbeat father situation, all this chaos that's happening in the black community. This is what's at the heart of it. And Blacktown, um, Blacktown.net and others out there which are pointing out feminism, the culprit of feminism, they are right on the mark, but it goes deeper than that. There's something behind that that we need to properly understood. And here's the connection right here, because it says in verse 5, for Solomon went after, what it says, Ashtoret, the what? The diva, the goddess, the female god, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination the Bati man of the Ammonites. And Solomon did what could for evil in the sight of Yahweh and went not fully after Yahweh, after the Lord, if you please, as did David his father. And it goes on to say, you understand, how the kingdom now was divided. And now Israel, for all intents and purposes, was in ruined, was in ruin. They could not fulfill the will. You understand, of the Kal Kidan, of the Benai Barit, of the covenant. They were out of the covenant. But there was a remnant. There was a remnant preserved. You understand, and this was preserved in the highlands of Ethiopia, the highlands of Ethiopia. And this is what we have here as a testament in the Kibra Neges, or the Queen of Sheba, and her only son, Minulik. Now, it's important to understand now, after she says, make sure that you never make women queens, it says, and all of the nobles of the king's house swore, and the governors and the counselors and the administrators, and it says, and she made Elamias and Azarias, Azarayo, or Azariah, the chief of the priests and the chief of the deacons, and what? They made the kingdom anew. They made the kingdom of David anew, fulfilling Psalm 6831. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God, to Ha Elohim, to the true God. And it says, and the sons, notice the sons, the sons of the mighty men, the Hayala and the Giborim of Israel. The warriors of Israel performed the what? They performed the Torah. They performed the Orit. They performed the law together, it says, with their King David. And now King David is the son, David II, Dagmawi Dawit, is the son of Solomon, the son of David I, in the tabernacle of witness. And the kingdom was what? The kingdom was made anew. And the hearts of the people shone at the sight of Zion, the tabernacle of the law of Ha Elohim, the law of God. And the people of Ethiopia did what? The people of Ethiopia, they cast aside their idols. And they worshiped their creator. 
the God who made them, the true God, the God of Israel, El Elohe Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, and the men of Ethiopia forsook their works and loved the righteousness and justice that God loveth. They learned Torah. They forsook their former fornications and chose purity in the camp. See, purity came into the camp. They stopped, they, they stopped letting their pants sag. You understand? They stopped being mama's boys. You understand? And became men of God, men of the true God. You understand? And, and good fathers and husbands, right? That what? That was in the sight of the heavenly seal. And they forsook divination and magic and chose repentance and tears. For God's sake, they forsook augury by means of birds. Augury, that's where you get the word auguration or inauguration. It's all idolatry, people. You understand? And the use of omens. And they returned to hearken to hear to God and to sacrifice to him. This is a beautiful, this is a very, very beautiful um, chapter that we have right here it says, and they forsook the pleasures of gods who were what? Gods who were devils. They forsook the pleasures, the clubs, the nightlife, you understand, the stripper poles and dancing, and all the rest of those abominations, you understand, the pleasures of gods who were devils, and chose the service, the Agelgalot, and the Misgana. Of Egeziari here, the Misgana of the true God. The daughters, it says, of Jerusalem suffered disgrace, and the daughters of Ethiopia were held in honor. The daughters of Judah, it says, were sad, whilst the daughters of Ethiopia rejoiced. The mountain, the mountains of Ethiopia rejoiced, and the mountains of Lebanon mourn. The people of Ethiopia were chosen from among idols and graven images, and the people of Israel were rejected. The daughters of Zion were rejected, and the daughters of Ethiopia were honored. The old men of Israel became objects of contempt. They had no regard for the old, and the old men of Ethiopia were honored. For God, it says, accepted Kabbalah, the peoples who had been cast away and rejected Israel, for Zion was taken away from them, and she came to the country of Ethiopia. For wheresoever God is pleased for her to dwell, there is her habitation. There is her habitation, and where he is not pleased that she should dwell, she dwelleth not. He is her founder, maker, and builder, the good God, the Tob Elohim, the Tobiah, the Tobiah, in the temple of his Kedisina, his holiness, the habitation of his Shekinah, Shekinah, his Kubur, with his son and the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. So the queen of Sheba, the queen of Ethiopia, Makeda, is highly favored, is highly honored. You understand? And this is one reason why we've taken this, this time and this moment to go through both the scriptures as well as the queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, according to the translation, to make it more clear. But still, we have to touch on the main matter before us, and we're going to go into this in the next part about the etymology of Ethiopia.